Set up behind me is the Coleman Instant 3P Swagger. It's not a swag, it's not a tent, it sits right in the middle. I'm gonna show you how to set it up and how to pack it away as well. Hit it. Ben from Snow is here, folks, at the Brown Hill Creek Tourist Park. A nice, warm but overcast day. This is the Instant Swagger 3P tent from Coleman in front of me here. I'm gonna show you how to set it up and pack it away. This is a great, Instant Up tent that kind of blurs the lines between swag and tent. It offers a bit more living space, a slightly smaller pack size than a swag unit. It doesn't come with all the bedding included, but isn't as big or necessarily as complicated as a large tent, so it's quite unique. When you buy the tent, this is how it comes. It weighs about 10 kilos. The bag itself measures about 120 centimeters, but inside it's a little bit less than that, about 110, 115 centimeters in pack length, and a bit over 20 centimeters in height and depth. I'll start by showing you what you get with the kit when you buy it. Now inside the carry bag for your Swagger 3P, you do get some instructions. They're actually sewn inside there so you can't lose them, but setup's pretty easy as I'm about to show you. Now inside the bag, this is the main portion of the tent. So you've got the frame and the inner all secured inside there and that's tied up with a couple of just nylon straps here. This is the fly sheet that goes over the top. Unique feature of this is you can use the inner without the fly sheet here. We'll show you more on that shortly. You get a couple of awning poles here, so you can set up the front door, either as a, a weather protected vestibule or as an awning, and you get enough pegs to be able to set up the awning, the windows and everything, plus a couple of guy ropes there, and a little patch of floor repair fabric with some warranty information inside. Now to get started with setup, we put the fly, the pegs uh, and the poles aside, and we wanna spread this inner out and start to put the instant up frame in place. Now we do want to get the orientation of the tent right. With the, with the tent rolled this way, if we use this orientation, this is going to be lengthwise. So the ends of the tent are going to be at either end here. Now there's a couple of ways we can tell the orientation. Firstly is by this color coded tab here. That's going to be at the front of the tent. So if we fold this out, I can see that that's going to be one end. This is now at the back. That also lines up with the door. So that's facing me. So I just need to fold these in and spin it around so my door's facing that way. Once you've got the orientation right, just fold the frame back, don't force it. It should just lie down flat on the ground. We can see there's a few components to it. We've got this center pole here that's gonna form the ridge of the tent. We've got these two uprights which form the, the, the sort of teepee shape at the end there. And then these composite poles which are all attached to the hub here and they sort of fall into place. They flex a little bit but they create a little bit more head space inside the tent. The first thing we wanna do for setup is come around to the end and we're gonna extend these poles out and into place. So this hub inverts backwards we pull these legs out until the little locking pin locks into place here. We do that on both sides at both ends. So that's the ends in place. We can see that these flexible poles here have just fallen into place. We don't need to do anything with those. We've got the four end poles locked in and we just need to now secure the ridge pole across the top here, which is done in the same manner as the ends. We just extend this outwards. We've got a little hole or a little point here where a locking pin will fall into place. So we extend this out until that locks. That is the inner of the tent all set up. Now, it's not windy here today, so I haven't been too concerned about um, the wind picking the tent up. I am gonna put pegs in the corners. If it was windy though, you'd either wanna put the pegs in first or have someone hold the tent um, to make sure it doesn't blow across the campsite. I will mention one other thing um, before we go too much further that you can actually use this tent inner by itself. Traditionally, the instant up range from Coleman, it was always recommended to use the fly for full stability with the tent. Coleman have actually introduced uh, guy ropes on the inner tent for the Swagger series. And that enables you to peg this out and um, create enough stability on the inner tent to use this without the need for the fly over the top, which gives you a good option for hot summer nights or for humid conditions. So I'll grab four pegs now, one in each corner. Now I'm gonna put the fly sheet on this today to show you how to set it up. So we just need to get the orientation of the fly sheet right. Now, two things to look for to get the orientation right is firstly, this zipper, this gray tab and the zipper and these, these eyelets that go right to the bottom. That's the vestibule or vestibule at the front there. And also this red tab here. So this red tab is color coded with the red tab down on this corner here. So we know that this corner matches this corner. They're the only two red tabs on the tent. So I can now throw the opposite end of this over the back of the tent or the inner tent and we can clip it all in place. 
Okay, so I've got the fly just sitting loosely in place. So we come to each end here for the next step. Uh, to each pole, we want to secure the fly sheet to the pole. So if we follow up underneath, we'll come to a little Velcro tab here. That wraps around the pole here. We then follow this right down to the bottom where we'll come across a little plastic clip here. That tees up with the D-ring on the inner team here, or the inner frame here. We clip that in place, so two attachment points on each corner. We do that on all four corners. Okay, so I've got the fly secured to the frame on each end, clipped on each corner. We just need three more pegs now. One in each um, side of the, the front entryway here. We'll peg this out as a weather protected vestibule to start with. So a peg here, a peg on the other side of that. And then there's one peg at the rear of the tent, which just pegs out a little, what's called the common circle ventilation features in a lot of their tents, uh, and just allows a bit of ventilation low down throughout the tent. Okay, so that's the tent all set up. At the moment, it's set up with sort of full weather protection mode, I suppose. With this zipped closed here, the windows are closed on the ends. So we got, um, if it's really heavy rain, you're fully protected inside. Cool feature though, is that we can actually set this doorway, this entrance here up as an awning, as a weather protected awning. If we unzip these zips on the side here, and we use the included awning poles in conjunction with the brass eyelets that feature on the corners here. These poles will lock into place. There's just a spring-loaded mechanism in the middle. These loop through the brass eyelets here. We grab the gyrops and a couple more pegs that are all included over the top, and we can create a shaded entrance to our Swagger 3P tent. So we've got the awning set up at the front here. Now these awning poles aren't adjustable, they're a fixed length. You can sort of adjust the height of what you've got here by angling these back if you like, or having it right upright. I've got that angle just a little bit there now, so it sits neatly against the edge of the tent there. And that's set up with a weather protected entrance to the tent, sleeping area inside. You could set a low rise chair up underneath there if you want for a bit of shade. Last thing I want to show you is the windows on the ends here because you've got a couple of different options with how you can set these up. Now firstly, you can leave them zipped up like this for full weather protection. If you want full ventilation, undo the zips on the sides, roll this up with the gyrops as well and secure it with these toggles at the top here to allow ventilation. There's an internally adjustable privacy screen. You've got this window at both ends and you've also got a little vent at the rear at the back there to allow ventilation throughout the tent. And your last option for setup here is to use the gyrobes that are attached to the bottom of the window here and peg this out as a little weather protected awning to allow a little bit, probably not in really heavy rain, but just light rain. It's gonna keep the rain from coming in here and still allow ventilation up underneath the tent. Now, the last thing I haven't mentioned, we did talk about the gyropes on the inner tent. There are also two more gyropes on the fly sheet here. I'd recommend putting these in place all the time, uh, even if it's not windy, just in case the wind picks up overnight. Um, but as it is now, that's still sitting pretty sturdily. And you've got that option of either setting up the inner with the gyropes or with the fly sheet in the gyropes as well. So got alternatives there. That was pretty easily set up all by myself. Didn't take long at all. It would be even easier with two people. Pack up just as easy. I'll start by taking the awning down. Okay, so I've got the awning down. I've just got the three pegs to take out around the base. One on each side of the vestibule at the front here, and one for the little circuit, circle ventilation vent at the rear. Once you've got all the pegs out, just go in and make sure you've got the windows closed. It's easier to have these shut when you fold the, uh, the fly up. It's gonna save this kind of big fat bit of fabric uh, getting in the way and making things a little difficult. And once you've got all the, the windows done up, doors done up and pegs are out, we can come to each of these poles here. Unclip it at the base, follow it back up the pole to that little Velcro tab that we did up before and undo that on all four legs and then we can slide the fly off the top. Now I've taken the four pegs out of the corners. Uh, I'm mindful of the wind, it is calm here today. If it was windy, I'd either leave these in place or just have someone make sure I'm holding the tent down in case the wind grabs it, because that's the instance where you can damage the frame. Now from here, we can collapse the tent down. So if we come across to the front here, we need to just collapse this centre ridge pole first. If you can't reach across, just undo the door and step inside the tent slightly. Come across and depress the little silver locking pin here so that this ridge pole collapses down. Now you shouldn't have to force the frame at any point here. If we come around to the ends here now, same thing, click these locking pins. Just let the frame collapse down on itself. Don't force it. It should just start to fall flat onto the ground. Same at the other end, and then we can fold it. Okay, we can see the frame's pretty much flat on the ground now. So from here, we wanna fold all of these legs back in against the center ridge pole here 
and try and take these little poles in with it as well. So push that, collapse the pole right up against itself, fold this up and in, holding the pole underneath here against it as well. So they all lay flat against that center ridge pole there. Try and fold the fabric a bit as you go. The flatter you get it, the easier it's going to roll up, or the flatter it's going to roll up, the easier it goes back in the bag. So from this point, we've kind of got a diamond. We can fold one half over the top of the frame. The frame's running down the middle here. Fold this half over the top. Now we can roll it up and tie it up with our ties. Just when you roll, just be aware that those frames can sort of stick out again. So if you find this resistance when you're rolling it, just make sure those shorter pole, um, the shorter sort of composite poles aren't sticking out. If is resistance, just roll it back a little bit, tuck those poles back in and then roll it up again. That is how to set up and pack away the common instant swagger three person tent, swag, swent or swagger, I guess is what common call it. They went back in the bag really easily. There's plenty of space in there. You're not gonna be able to pack it up with bedding inside like you would a traditional swag. You're gonna have to pack the bedding separately. So by the time you throw that into the scenario, it ends up probably being just as big as a swag, but it gives you a fair bit of versatility with that instant up frame and plenty of use cases. It's a unique little shelter. You can grab these online at snowies.com.au at our lowest prices every day. If you've got any questions, let us know down in the comments below. Subscribe to our channel. We'll get all, we'll send you all of our latest information. We'll check out some other videos like this one down here.